<clears throat> hey, you know, in these times, I got to, um, I got to like remind myself not to get super emotional, right? Because I get super emotional about it. <clears throat> May not wear it out on the outside, but uh, I don't like red candles any more than anybody else does. Um, but I think overall, uh, I know we're beginning to hear again, you know, the cycles changed, right? And I don't know that it has, maybe it has, don't know, but I'm beginning to hear those, uh, those things out there, those rumors. No, it's going to be different this time. We already hit a top. We're not going up. I mean, so it gets to be very emotional, but looking at the, like the four-year cycle charts, they look sort of like they're rhyming from the past, right? So um, we won't know until we know, then we'll have to just live through it. And I always just, you know, console myself with, with, you know, the mantra, right? One of the things we learned, particularly with Richard Hart, is that volatility is in the game. Dips are in the game. Yes, I know it feels like it keeps on dipping, but um, it hasn't always been true. We look back, you know, back in March, everybody was super happy, right? Things were, woo. You know, look all the way back in January, things were super happy, woo, right? Yeah. But so it's not any, it's not any surprise to wake up and see crypto drop 30%, 50%, right? So... Especially, and I was just thinking about that today, and I want to get your thoughts on it too, Ewok, but just to kind of, I guess, launch right into this topic, because the, the time thing is is something that I think people should be paying attention to. Like, everybody's upset about ETH right now, obviously. It's just absolutely bleeding against BTC. It had a horrible month of August, as did basically everything, but ETH in particular really took a beating. It's down to, what, about 2,500, 2,400 right now um, against BTC, and I was just thinking, you mentioned, Chris, man, like the, the cycles still kind of look like they're rhyming, even though we might have taken a weird path so far. Like we've never really seen BTC hit that new all time high prior to the halving, which we did see right. this year. So might be why we're seeing some of this weird compensation for that as this year goes on. And who knows what that'll mean for this fall as we get into 2025. But just on that, Ewok, real quick, just your thoughts on the cycle timing um, and just kind of the uniqueness we've seen of this one. It, it's unique in a way, but also as Crispy said, like timing wise, I mean, it, it, it's close enough to what we've seen in the past, I think. Yeah, it's very close. I, I, you know, when you look back historically, September has always kind of been a bad month. Um, several of the cycles have had drops in September. That whole wake me up when September ends song is, is coming very true. Um, it, you know, it Duke is unique. Could fit too. Dookie might also yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it is unique, though, because this is the first time we've ever had an ETF as well. So, I mean, not only for, for good things, but for um, for yeah, two of them. Now we have ETH as well. So, you know, it is different. But, again, like Crispy said, it, it's rhyming very similar. There's a lot of similarities uh, to the patterns. Yes, we did hit an all-time high. However, it wasn't much more. Like, it didn't explode um, and go crazy. I think it was just there was a... Uh, a unique injection of money um, at a weird time of the cycle. So uh, again, we're right on track and, you know, it'll be the same until it isn't. And, uh, you know, I'm for the people out there saying, but it's different. Uh, you, you know, a lot of them are saying that just to say, I told you so, you know, after the fact, but if it's the same again, you know, no one's going to call them out for, for trying to be different. I don't think so. That's that's pretty much all they're doing is just trying to be the one who said, see, I told you so. Uh, one of these times it will be different, but, you know, until we see it really change from from what it's been, um, it will remain the same. Yeah, I think Bitcoin maxis have that tendency to to want to do the I told you so thing for sure. And that's just kind of always going to be how they their MO. Uh, bit finesse here, just real quick, and because I was this kind of coincides with what I was going to ask you, Chris P. We were talking off air for a minute about some of the things that you look at when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bit finesse, again, everybody that's involved with ETH, which it, in other words means like the entire altcoin index as well. <laughs> um, do we have guesses for the ETH bottom now that it's been a full blown downtrend for eight weeks, 2100, which it's already hit? It hit that in August during that capitulation. Sure. event that was all that we so quick it was a month ago now um 1500 a thousand i mean i personally 
can't imagine it going below um, really where it's already gone. I think that's that's probably what we're going to see. But I am curious your thoughts, Crispy, about um, what we're seeing from ETH here. Because, again, that ratio is bleeding. It's at like 0.42 as we speak. It had been up above 0.5 for quite a while until this event in August where things just really went down the crapper. So what do you make of where ETH is? And um, should we be worried about this ratio? What could the timeline look like here? Yeah, I mean, there's so much that's happened. I mean, because when I say that, we we hit an early uh, Bitcoin top. Um, you could argue that ETH followed and hit a hit a. I mean, it wasn't exactly all time highs, right? But um, what ETH got up to um, about four four K um, back in March. Um, so that was that was like early, right? And so when it went early, now we've seen it break back down. And I'm not a super TA guy, but I follow like the three fifty the uh, golden ratios, that type of stuff. And if you look back in August, um, it was it was bouncing off until it was finally rejected by the 350-day moving average, and it fell below the 350-day moving average. So when you look at it from that perspective, um, they got some nice wicks down there that, that were bought back up. So someone accumulated. I, you know, anything's possible. One scenario is that, you know, possibly it goes down to the next level of support, which was around the 1600 level and then comes back up. Um, but really, you know, the game did change a little bit, right? Because now we've got, because you, you guys have been around for a while, you know, as much as I do, right? When I first got in, there was like, you know, like institutional, don't even talk about it. My broker was like, I, we were told we can't talk about crypto. Don't talk about crypto, right? Well, that's a that's a far cry from now them shilling, uh, you know, ETFs to their clients. So things have changed quite a bit, and the game is always wash, rinse, repeat. It's that's how it is. That's how it runs: wash, rinse, repeat. And what does that mean? That means that there is a group of people that are looking to buy what you're willing to sell. And so, if people are willing to dump it, it'll go down. But if they hold it, it'll it'll likely settle out until all the others who got out are out <clears throat> people have loaded up their the institutional guys loaded up enough money and then it'll go up in the other direction yeah and uh the the, the point you made earlier you walk i mean we've never seen this behavior like we've never seen two etfs like this before so that's got to throw a bit of a wrench into the cycle a little bit anyway maybe as far as some of the timing but anyway um hopefully we do see ETH kind of close things here soon 